place today. It's a beautiful morning today. It's a very beautiful morning today. Good morning to you on this beautiful morning. It is so wonderful that we decided we're gonna do children's moment outside. There's a nice breeze. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. It's beautiful. So make sure you get some sunshine today. Well, today we're gonna talk about family. Yep, that's right. Everybody's got one, even if you think you don't. And that's what we're gonna learn about today. But first, I wanna show you a picture of my son and I from when he was a little baby. He's not so little anymore, he's very big. But here's that picture. Aww, isn't that cute? Somebody had it made for us. I, I love it. I'm gonna put that one up right here. Sometimes we keep pictures of our family around the house so that we can always remember them, right? Mm-hmm, absolutely. But that got me thinking about family reunions. Have you ever been to a family reunion? Hmm. Family reunions are really important. It's when a whole bunch of people get together. Moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles. And let's not forget, especially if you're at one of my family reunions, lots and 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 lots of cousins. <laughs> yeah, the whole family gets together. Now, families stay in touch in lots of different ways. We can text each other, we can call each other, we can connect on Facebook or Instagram. We can even email one another. But there's nothing like actually getting together, right? It's amazing. Sometimes our families look a lot different than other families, right? We have blended families nowadays. So sometimes you live with your grandma or grandpa, or with your mom and dad, or with your dad and your dad, or with your mom and your mom, or you live with just your mom, or you live with just your dad or you might live with an aunt and an uncle, or you might live with your foster parents, or you might live with your adoptive parents. All of those are wonderful families. Mm-hmm. So family reunions are important so that people can stay in touch with one another. You know, in the Bible, they talk about families a lot too. Absolutely, they do. We should never overlook the importance of family. In the very first book of the Bible, in Genesis, even God talks about the importance of family. He's like, here is Adam and Eve, the first family. Now go and populate the earth. That's right. <laughs> That's how we all got our beginning. Now, we always have somebody there to take care of us, right? Yeah, it could be a parent, a guardian, grandparent, aunt, uncle, all of those scenarios we talked about before. And all these older people take care of those younger people, right? And then what happens? Those younger people grow up. Mm-hmm. Pretty quickly sometimes, too. Or at least it seems that way to all the adults. And then the children get to take care of the adults that once took care of them. It's like a giant circle. It's like we're all connected. Pretty amazing, right? I think it's amazing how God put families together. That's what families are all about. Taking care of one another. Ugh. But for some people, they feel like they don't have a family. Or maybe their family are, are all gone. I know my family is scattered all over the world. So it can feel really distant. But that's why God has us part of his family too. So if you're following along at home, we're gonna be reading out of the book of Mark. So it goes Matthew, Mark, and we're gonna to go to chapter three, and then we're gonna go all the way to verse 34 and 35. And I know the wind is picking up, so I'm so sorry, but we have some examples too. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Oh, look, there's that picture. So in today's gospel reading, whoops, I don't think our little house props are gonna stay standing in the wind. Our friend Jesus, hello, there's Jesus. He's teaching in somebody's home. So all these family members are there. Maybe there's some grandparents. 
and people of all different kinds, right? Because that's how our families look nowadays. So all these friends are gathered round. Aloha. <laughs> there we go. We have lots of friends around. And the wind is going to make sure that everybody is falling all over the place. Oh boy. And I bet there was a bunch of children hanging around too, right? Absolutely. So here's Jesus talking with this, this group of people, a family. And he says, to his family. Oh boy, this wind just, just does not want to cooperate with us today, does it? That's okay. Because it's keeping us nice and cool. So here's Jesus. He's talking to the family here. <laughs> he must have some pretty powerful words. He's knocking down the walls. <laughs> so here's what he says. We're going to go back to chapter 3 and look at verses 34 and 35. I'm going to start reading around verse 32. Right when Jesus says, Jesus' mothers and brothers arrived at the house where he was teaching. They stood outside and sent word for him to come out and talk to them. There was a crowd around Jesus and someone said, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. Jesus replied to them, who are my brothers? Then he looked at those around him and said, These are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and my sister and my mother. Do you know what Jesus was talking about there? Sometimes it's hard to understand, right? Jesus talks in parables, so in stories that help us to understand what he is speaking about. So when we're reading the scripture right here, Jesus is telling us that we may not re realize it, but when we put our faith in God, we become part of another family. <gasps> Could you imagine? Yep, a whole nother family. We become part of God's family. See, in our Bible, Jesus took a group of people that were seated around him and said, see, my mother and my brothers, whoever does God's will is my brother and my sister and my mother. We get to be part of another family. When we put our faith in Jesus, we become a part of the family of believers. That's what church family is all about, right? Yep, absolutely. So we know that we're supposed to care for our family and we're also supposed to care for our family at the church too. And we can do that in lots of different ways. See, just like our friends here care for one another, we can care for those around us. We could pray for those who are sick. We could feed those who are hungry. We could give clothing to those in need, give shelter to the homeless, comfort those who are sad, be a friend to those who have no friends. Family is so important. Our earthly family and our spiritual family, they mean so much to us. Never take them for granted. That's right. Your church family loves you just like your family loves you. God has this amazing love. It's like there's a little string tied to each one of us that connect us together. So before we go today, let's say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families, all the different kinds of families that we have and all the families that you bring us to, whether they be families in our home or families within our church and our community grandparents, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, foster moms, foster dads, adoptive moms, adoptive dads, and even those friendly people that take care of us. We also thank you for our church family. Help us to love and care for one another as you have taught us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm so glad that you were all here with me today. Before we go, don't forget, we're going to have vacation Bible school here. So three nights of tons of fun. So make sure you check out our Facebook page or our website. Also, did you know you can come have fun with us here in the church? That's right. You absolutely can come and have fun with us. Now, some of us still have to wear a mask. 
and some of us do not. So before you come to church, just ask your parent or guardian if you still have to wear your mask or not. Either way, all are welcome. We'll see you soon. Bye.